Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting video here on the channel. Today I bring you a very special kind of first impressions reads. These books were sent to me by the fine folks at Yen Press. Completely unexpected. Thank you so much. Let's get started. The first book that we're going to talk about is Sword Art Online Re Aincrad Volume 1. This is drawn by Kimi, the original story by Reki Kawahara. And this is essentially a retelling of the first story arc for Sword Art Online, but with an update to its visuals in manga form. If you don't know, Sword Art Online is this massively popular series where we have these characters that are playing this virtual reality uh, MMO. RPG type game called Sword Art Online, heavily inspired by fantasy stories with RPG elements, of course. So these characters are playing this and on the opening day, they get a surprise from the creator of the game. He appears in game as this massive overlord type creature and announces that he is going to play the ultimate test for these individuals, for the uh, thousands of people that have signed up and are now playing the game where now nobody can sign out and they are essentially trapped in there and if by any chance somebody takes their headset off in the real world they will die thanks to a neural link between the headset and the game into the individual's brain and if they die in game they die for real so this is sort of a play on the battle royale trope done through the modern lens of video games and virtual reality we follow the main character kirito who is a bit of a loner at the start that's one of the biggest plot points of the series he is a solo beta tester and that comes in, into play later when people start questioning his abilities but for the most part in this first volume we don't touch on that too much instead it is kirito's reaction to being trapped in this game and his commitment to beating it and being able to escape into the real world so he's doing all of these missions and meeting different characters first volume covers up to his first encounter with asuda which is uh, one of the main characters of the series and of course how they're going to clear the first dungeon and beat the boss there for the most part this is a very solid reintroduction to this world i am not the biggest fan of sword art but i did like the first season of the anime adaptation that's as far as I got or maybe I watched the second one I don't remember too much but I did like what I saw unfortunately with the franchise it started as a novel then it made its way into light novel territory got adapted into anime has many video games and movies massive franchise worldwide thousands of fans the manga however has not been the most successful a lot of the manga volumes aren't as well received unfortunately which is a shame so with this it's sort of them, you could say milking the franchise, sure, but it's them trying to update the visuals on the manga side to better reflect the nature of the story thanks to its many adaptations. If you've never checked out Sword Art Online and you're interested, this is a fine way to get started and you're not going to be missing out on anything because it is literally re-adapting the beginning of this franchise with, I believe, some added context of a couple scenes are expanded on, some different ways to go about the story compared to the original manga adaptation and even the original source material. So I do recommend it. I had a lot of fun going back and remembering when I first watched this on TV and of course reliving some moments from the earlier days of this franchise. Speaking of franchises, the second book that we're going to talk about here is Goblin Slayer A Day in the Life, Volume 1. This is drawn by Daichi Matsuse with, of course, the original story from Kumo Kagyo. What's interesting about this, similar to SAO, that one was a retelling. This is a spin-off of another popular series with the kids these days, Goblin Slayer. The original Goblin Slayer came out a couple years ago and it tells of this adult man who lives on this is fantasy world where it's an alternate reality with monsters and dungeons, magic abilities and swords, uh, sort of your typical dark fantasy RPG. 
he is focused on exterminating goblins, which are a nuisance. They're a pest. They are uh, evil creatures that cause harm to people. And that's what he's going to dedicate himself to. So Goblin Slayer, that's what he's going to do. He's going to slay it and do a damn good job at it and uh, become famous for it, where he attracts a lot of individuals with abilities like a young priestess who actually becomes the main secondary character throughout much of the initial story. And you have other characters that gravitate towards hanging out with our band of heroes. Now, this book I thought was a spin-off, but as I was reading the back material, we have some words from the mangaka here, and he mentions in the afterword that this manga is actually adapting volume 12 of the Goblin Slayer novel series, which is the original. Of course, later it became an anime and manga and all that stuff. It's kind of a spin-off, but not really. It's sort of a day in the life of secondary characters that might not get the spotlight. They do have their moment to shine here in four distinct chapters. I do have to mention that similar with SAO, I watched season one of Goblin Slayer and never really came back to it or read any of the books or novels or anything. So my knowledge that I'm working Working on is based on what I remember from that first season and what I read here. We follow this group of young adventurers on a quest that they're doing and they get trapped in a cave as they're escaping from a dragon and of course they fight goblins and all that stuff so that was very fun action-packed. It has a little bit of fan service but it is what it is and then the other part of the book which is the main part I should say follows much more familiar characters like the young priestess the female knight, the witch, and the high elf archer. As they form a party of their own, as they tackle a specific quest that turns into something much bigger and action-packed. So that, in a nutshell, is this manga. I don't have much experience with Goblin Slayer, like I mentioned, but this first book here, A Day in the Life, was actually pretty fun. I enjoyed it. It is straight to the point, and even though it has that twist regarding these individuals, I can honestly recommend this book if you want a sample of what the Goblin Slayer franchise can be, because it's not necessarily about this guy killing off every single goblin that he can see and spot throughout the land, because, yeah, he becomes, like, super powered and people you know, flock to him and you see all these different characters that come and go through the story. And this volume gives us a chance to explore the thought process of these individuals and maybe give them the plot development that might be lacking through the main volumes. The art is nice, super clean, easy to follow. I like the character models and the action is pretty brutal at times with great attention to detail to the gore and the sword movements and archery and all that stuff. There are dragons and other zombie creatures and goblins and they all look really fantastical. So in that regard, I think this one is a success as well. Now, out of all the books that I'm going to cover in this video, this specific one was the one I was scared to talk about. Bungo Stray Dogs Official Comic Anthology Ray Volume 1. This is by Kafka Asagiri with character designs by Sango Harukawa, and it has a lot of guest creators that I have to admit, I don't know who they are. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Bungo Stray Dogs. I did try and watch the anime, and and I believe I just never kept going with it. I think I saw a handful of episodes. So I was completely out in the dark here. And it's fine, but I would be doing a disservice by telling you about this in detail. It, it really requires you to love the franchise and know about these characters to fully appreciate the humor, adventures, and quirky storytelling that happens in this anthology. Now, this isn't a main series volume, so nothing major is going to happen. It's just random adventures for these characters, and if you love them, you'll be right at home with this anthology. I believe the tally is is around 13 stories for almost 
140 pages. What I can compliment this on is the art, which looks really nice. So honestly, if you are a fan of Bungo Stray Dogs, you can't go wrong picking this up. It's a nice way to get more out of the world building of this franchise. And if you're not a fan and you want to get into this series, I do recommend going back to the original novels or maybe checking out the anime and get to know the cast of characters before jumping on here because you will get more out of it that way. Next one on the list here is The Kept Man of the Princess Knight. This is based on the light novel of the same name, written by Toru Shirogane, with art by Keiyang. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If not, I do apologize. So this one was pretty interesting. I did not know what I was getting myself into, but it was recommended to me before getting this book, so I was excited to check it out. Volume 1 tells the story of this kept man, Matthew and how he is supposed to serve the character of Arwen, the princess who is fighting countless dungeons to seek the ability to reestablish their lost kingdom. We don't know the circumstances as to how Matthew ended up being a kept man, nor do we know the true intentions and feelings between these two characters. As you read the story, you start getting bits of information and you start adding everything up. Matthew is a scoundrel at first, an adulterous individual. He is wasting away the money that the princess is giving him and has a notorious reputation in this town. This is a very not safe for work manga because of violence, language, sex, nudity. So I have to be careful with what I'm showing here. Matthew has some honor and some past glory that you don't see right away. You think, oh, this guy's a scumbag. But there's a story to him that I don't necessarily want to spoil in this video. Maybe as I read more, I can do a, a further deep dive or an actual review for this series. But he is much stronger than he seems and had some uh, interesting things happen to him that has sort of handicapped him to this town and created a bullseye on his back from different characters that appear that turn out to be assassins and all that stuff. The majority of this first volume is dedicated to establishing the world that Matthew is living in and, of course, his relationship with the princess. Now, most of the volume, she's away clearing dungeons and finding treasure and stuff. So we're left with Matthew and his ongoing adventures in this town, whether it be at a brothel or a diner or requesting information from the guild masters. So it turns out that Matthew is known throughout this world. Some people don't seem to mind. Other people don't really like what he does. There is a method to his madness. And that is evident when we do see encounters between the Princess Knight and, of course, the Kept Man. There is a fair amount of violence that is... Uh, really well made. It's brutal, no holds bar. It's not afraid to show you the ugly side of this dark fantasy adventure, and you even have some crime elements throughout the book as well. Now, typically, when you have stories with heavily flawed characters, it gives us more ample room for development, progression, and potential redemption. I'm excited to keep going with this. Uh, I thought it was a pretty fun, dark, and savory <laughs> volume one here of uh, The Kept Man of the Princess Knight. The art is detailed enough, not 100% my cup of tea, but I do appreciate what it's doing. It, it, it is well defined and gives us sort of this dark, grimy look at this town and the people that live there. Now, something fun to note is that the end of the book, you have a special short story by the author of the original light novel, Toru Shirogane. So that was pretty interesting as well. It gives you more context and uh, more info on these characters. Characters. Friday at the Atelier. This is volume one here written by Sakura Hamada. This is also a little bit not safe for work because of actual nudity in this book. Now, I'm not going to try and censor everything. This is just a fictionalized 2D character, so I don't think we're going to get into trouble with the censors and YouTube. 
but this is a, a very charming, a witty story about these two individuals. We have Emiko Tamaki, who is this overworked, uh, sad and depressed office worker. And one day she is musing about potentially ending her life. And on a whim, she wishes for uh, some fish and some food. And this extravagant avant-garde artist, I guess, trips and out of his grocery bags, some fish spill out. So she thinks, okay, uh, heavenly intervention here. This man turns out to be Shunsui Ishihara. Now Ishihara immediately sees the beauty in Emiko and makes the strangest proposal, tells her if she would like to be his model for his painting, but he needs a nude model. She, of course, is eccentric in her own right, not really making her own decisions and sort of just going with the flow at the start of the story and just agrees to it because, you know, work sucks and life has been down in the gutter, so why the heck not, and becomes his nude model. Now, the painting involves a lot of fish on her, which kind of weirded me out. I've never seen that before, so that was, uh, that was an interesting choice, and they find success a year later. There's a quick time skip towards the opening chapters. They find success in his art, and we basically follow through this first volume the relationship that forms between them and all the different hijinks that ensue. Emiko starts to be more confident and Ishihara, while petty at first, actually does care about her and doesn't see her as an object. He sees her as an individual and potentially maybe starts developing feelings, but Emiko is too aloof and stubborn to notice these things, which causes a lot of comedic hijinks in this manga. Of course, with episodic adventures, we sort of have the, the story of the week where something interesting happens and it typically does get resolved, which leads into uh, the character progression for these adults, which is really nice. This one, I think, has a lot of potential. It's only going to be four volumes, if memory serves me right. This finished a couple years ago. The nudity aspect is done really well in a tasteful manner. It is not gratuitous. It doesn't go into the etchy or pornographic route. It's more just, this is a nude model. They do the thing. That's it. It's not the focus of this story. It just happens to be one of the interesting quirks about it, I guess. But yeah, I like the characters and I really enjoy the art. It's very soft and subtle and dramatic when it needs to be. Some of the splash pages are really really lovely to see and the actual art element of the series is fun as well so I do recommend it it's a lot of fun just keep in mind that it does have a, a not safe for work warning to it Finally, we have The Perks of Being an S-Class Heroine, Volume 1. This is an original story by Irinbi and art by Gur. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's a fun artist name right there. So this is actually my first time with an Ice Press book, and I'm really excited about that. Ice Press is a division, a publishing division from Yen Press, focusing on the webtoon aspect and uh, Korean comics, manhwa, and all that stuff. And this is printed Western style, left to right, and it is in full color. This was a mixed bag of elements that typically I'm not huge on, but the combination here was really charming and it kept me intrigued. I didn't know what to think at first, but I, I dug it and I am excited to check out more. This tells the story of a young girl who unexpectedly dies and it's revealed that the gods who manage public infrastructures in the afterlife are sort of remodeling the different worlds that they're sending these souls to. So it's a little bit like an isekai being reborn in another time and place, but it's based off of like light novels or the otome games, for example. So you have those elements mixed in and it has the JRPG video game element where it has the user interface and, and skill brackets and all that stuff. And the main character, she wants the most carefree, cutest world that she can travel to because she's had a very rough upbringing. The ones that took her in, I believe it was her uncle, was a pretty abusive 
person along, you know, with uh, his whole family, basically. Uh, they mistreated her and, and stole her money and, and funds and all that stuff. So she led a very sad life. Unfortunately, she died by mistake. She wasn't supposed to go out early, but she did. And to compensate, they send her to this other world. And by mistake, or actually by uh, judging from her abilities, the randomizer for these worlds is appointed by the spirit of a corgi. I don't know what's happening there, but it's cute. I like it. And she ends up in an S tier world where the main protagonist dies and loops back in time countless times until he can solve the quest or the main plot of the series. So she is reborn as the daughter of one of the workers at the mansion where eventually the protagonist of that story is going to turn up. It's a lot of elements thrown at you but it makes sense it holds your hand at the beginning and it introduces everything pretty nicely I love the main character's reactions as she is learning about this service where she is transported into another world her soul is and now she is the character I let Rodeline I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly and in that world she is wanting to save that world and not die and come back in endless life loops so she is going to use that uh, UI system and, and all the uh, money she's accumulated thanks to an insurance policy that she agreed to on her phone when she died that was mysteriously sent from the afterlife and with that money she's going to cash in and, and get all the skills and stuff to beat all the opposition that comes her way and since this was originally a webtoon webcomic it is very uh, easy to read it's very fast paced even when it has a lot of dialogue everything is brisk and moves at a steady pace and that can make for a very engaging quick turn of the page read which is always great the art is lovely i really enjoy the character designs and of course the main protagonist uh, i love that she has very bright bubblegum pink hair and the whole book is gorgeously put together i love the presentation here really s class publishing from Yen Press and Ease Press, I should say, cannot recommend it enough. And I love how it's bombarding all the senses with uh, the pastel colors and pinks. Really lovely presentation and attention to detail. Overall, the story is a lot of fun. It leaves off in a cliffhanger. It's not afraid to go into darker territories, which I appreciate. And I really like this mashup stories. It has a bunch of tropes and plot devices from other uh, things that we've read in the past, but it works here. There's a charm to it. There's a level of excitement as you read the story of this older woman now in the body of a young girl and she's trying to survive by all means necessary. So yeah, it's one of those stories that has a wacky premise, but you don't care because you're invested and you're having a fun time. Between Friday at the Atelier and this one, I think S-Class Heroine might be my favorite read out of this whole bunch and I cannot wait for volume two. So there it is, some first impressions on really cool books. Thank you once again to the folks at Yen Press for sending these volume ones my way. I am forever thankful, that is so awesome. And I'm happy to bring my thoughts to all of you as well. If you guys have read any of these books, let me know in the comment section below. And if you wanna recommend some stuff that's similar to this, please do so as well. I'm always on the lookout for more stuff to read and talk about with you guys on this channel. So thank you everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of Manga Geekdom. Truly do appreciate it. I've got to go. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.